Well, folks, welcome to High Voltage Lab. Are you ready for some fun? Yes. Of course you are. Of course you are. Um, so the major thing we're really going to focus on today is battery isolation. Okay. And the key to this is to make sure that we don't just pull the plug. So we're going to be hunting for this plug on our GMC out there. And yeah, just about anybody could pull the plug out, pull it down, follow the instructions, one, two, three. The problem is a lot of people think that they're safe once they've done that. They're not, okay? Or maybe not. Worse yet, you don't know if you're safe. So we're gonna make sure on today's lab that we take an opportunity to really make sure you're safe. So on the high voltage lab, I wanna make sure we have a chance to take a close look at that. If uh, our cameraman will take a close look at the lab so you can kind of see what we're looking to accomplish. Uh, we're looking to identify a lot of things on this vehicle. And beyond that, uh, we're going to figure out where that service plug is and how to verify a loss of voltage. So what we mean by loss of voltage, bear with me just a moment, is to ensure that when the plug removed, that we're safe. Because we're not always safe due to capacitors. Capacitors, think of them as a small battery that holds a charge, even though you think everything's been disconnected. Now we use them for a, a number of reasons, but what we don't always know is from vehicle to vehicle, the discharge time on that capacitor. I was at the Honda Training Center several years ago. We went to a couple different vehicles where we found the discharge time on the capacitor to vary up to five minutes. Some lost their current immediately, voltage came to zero. Others took five minutes. So during that five minute time, you could be injured worst kill. It could be two that you have a capacitor that just does not discharge in the way that we would expect it to. So that's our focus today. It's all about safety. Now I've got a display here that I think is going to help us really with our nomenclature, you know, getting an idea of what the major components are that we're going to be uh, working with. Our high voltage battery. Okay, this is uh, going back to the Prius, which really paved the pathway, in my opinion, for the hybrid and electric vehicle of today. You know, before this era, you just didn't see a hybrid on the road. Now, when this vehicle was first launched, I was working for Toyota Motor Sales, and it was pretty interesting to see these cars first hit Los Angeles in the late 90s, the testing, the concern of, hey, can this car go fast enough down the highway? Can this car go in the mountains? And I'll admit, I was a skeptic too. And come to find out, with the battery advancements of today, um, they do it. They get you where you need to be. Now, whether you like this particular model car or not, I do like the technology. We're dealing with a 273 volt battery, close to 300 on a lot of these. Um, and we gotta be careful on how we isolate it. Now, several years ago, um, I was able to get these components donated from Toyota, which was great. Because in this era, if you went out to buy this battery, you're talking about $10,000 for a battery. That's real money, folks, right? Well, fortunately, now they're serviceable. So if we had a battery module that went down uh, with the right scan tool and diagnostic equipment, we can actually go in, isolate the exact cell, open the battery up. Once we've done all the things like we're going to do today, making sure it's safe, disassemble the bus bars, and actually replace just that one cell. So. And the era when I was first uh, awarded these uh, awesome donations, I was a little scared, I'll be honest, to open a battery up like this because I didn't know anybody else that ever had done it in the early 2000s. But with the safety equipment I'm gonna demonstrate today with you all, um, I was safe obviously, and I'm still here today because of the procedures that, that I follow, okay? So we've got our high voltage battery. Remember that's DC voltage though. This component's rather interesting here. This does a lot of things. This is our motor, our generator, and our transaxle, all in one. So the differential, transmission, transaxle, we're all inside this, this box. The motor that propels the car down the road is in there, and the generator that recharges the battery is all right here. Now this guy runs on and produces alternating current. Well, that's a problem because uh, we have a battery that's DC. Well, that's where the inverter, invert, 
excuse me, the inverter comes in, the converter, so we can change that from direct current to alternating current to power your vehicle. And then when it comes to regen braking, which I love, that's my favorite part of this entire system. Because all of that kinetic energy that's lost when you're hitting the brake pedal, gets stuck in traffic, you're on Broadway, well, that's just all given up. But in a vehicle like this with regen braking, you're not giving it up. In fact, it's kind of like the sensation associated with downshifting a manual transmission, that engine braking, but now we're capturing that energy by allowing this to uh, become a generator. We then produce alternating current, convert it to direct, and back to battery. So if you look at the fuel economy numbers on a vehicle like this, believe it or not, in most cases, the city is as good as or better than the highway, which is a rare deal. Yeah, it's like, wow, how, how do you do that? Well, it's regen braking. And uh, the lower speeds work really well in this particular kind of car. So before we head out in the shop with our lab, a um, couple key things. Uh, we need a meter that's going to allow us to do what we need to do. And I do like the Fluke 87. Uh, with this particular model, it'll do a thousand volts. So we're plenty good in that regard. Um, these gloves are not just some rubber gloves. These are special gloves that are double O rated for a thousand volts. Uh, they come in a box. Um, and when this box is open, we put when the box was open and these do need to be retested, um, is they really are saving your life. In a lot of cases. So how do you test a glove? I test a glove anytime I put it on. Um, ideally I'll blow a little bit of air in here but today with my mask on that's going to be tough so I'm just going to twist this up a little bit and make sure it holds air and it does. Okay. I tested these earlier this morning too. I'm going to test this glove in the same fashion. Okay. I'm going to twist that up just a tiny bit. Does it hold air? It does. Okay. So we don't have any pinhole leaks in these. The problem is we're going to be working with hand tools. And as I do so, this rubber could easily become torn. So that's not going to work. We do need the proper fitting leather gloves to now really just protect the rubber glove from getting torn. So now that we have the right gloves on, it's time to get to work. All right, folks, if you're ready to have some fun, follow me. We're going to find that orange plug, but we're going to test it. And we're going to make sure we have isolated the battery properly. We've got a little ways to walk today as the vehicles are staged. They're in the other department here. difficult to do myself. Now so we're walking quick to get you over there. So I'm going to keep that on the top of my toolbox. Um, per the instructions, okay, I'm going to grab those instructions real quick from the rest of our colleagues here. Thank you very much. This is not just the instructions off of um, a third-party service information website. This is from General Motors, and I printed them off because I want to make sure as I go through this that I don't miss anything and we do this all in the proper sequence. So this is really important, regardless of what kind of car you're working on, that you follow the OEM service information. So, with one of the first couple steps that we're going to perform today, 
Um, I like to go ahead and get the negative battery cable, disconnect, so we don't have to worry about energizing the modules that should not be alive. We then want to test our meter. The last thing that we want is a DVOM that's not working properly. So we're going to fire this guy up. And we're going to see that we have 10.44 volts. Not enough to start your car. We would hope that's 12.6. I have a feeling this one's been sitting around for a while. So that's going to need a battery charge when we're all said and done. But the whole purpose of checking the battery here is to really just verify that my meter works properly. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and go around next to the passenger um, rear door area. And I think that the best place maybe uh, for our camera um, might be in the very rear compartment. If you'd like to just go ahead and continue around the back of the vehicle, I don't appreciate that. All right, so you're going to have to probably crawl up in there a little bit there, uh, cameraman. And I've already cheated a little bit here. The reason why I wanted to show you that service disconnect plug uh, to begin with is because I've disconnected it. And the reason why I pulled the plug ahead of time is that there is a wait period of five minutes before we want to do any testing. So had I done that, we would be sitting here uh, showing you the rest of the interior of the, uh, the Yukon for a while. Um, and it's pretty straightforward. If this were still plugged in, it would be sitting right over here. So I'm not going to plug it in or I got to restart that time frame. But hopefully you can see that OK and where it lives. And I'm going to go ahead and follow the instructions where it says one, you pull up and you pull out. And this plug will simply allow you to then pull it out. So this locking mechanism keeps it locked in when it's in there. And you can see where it pushes back down and up like that. Okay, so really straightforward as far as getting it out, away you go. Now this here, this connector allows current to flow. And when you remove this, this battery is supposed to be isolated. The problem is, is if there's a capacitor that's still alive, we could be in for a surprise when we open up the hybrid system under the hood. So as we continue to follow General Motors, service information, step by step, uh, we're going to find that the area that we have to test this particular battery at has an access panel cover that has to be removed. So I've got my hand tools here, and that's why I've got this uh, the leather gloves on today, is it's a little difficult to do, and i got to get these bolts out. So I loosened them already just to speed us up a little bit, <clears throat> but I didn't want to mislead you on this step. I think that uh, in some cases, um, a lot of people will just go ahead and pull that plug and say, hey, it's fun to work on, but the problem is, what if you're not? You always worry about dropping a bolt when you're doing something like this because it's hard to maneuver. I mean, I've got two pairs of gloves on. It's not ideal, right? You'd much rather have no gloves on when you're doing this, but you also want to be safe and not be injured through the process. So that's why I didn't want to cheat and have this cover off. To show you that really the right way, you need to spend some money. This is uh, not a hobby for somebody just to do on the weekend. This is really ideally performed in a, in a shop environment because they've already got this type of equipment to work on hybrid electric cars. Again, do not do this if you don't own the gloves. So under this panel here, there is a secondary switch that you can see right here. And the purpose of this switch would be if somebody left this cover out of uh, the vehicle that the battery would not connect to the rest of the car is another precaution so you have this plug here on the back side of this plug um, there's a sensor that has to be acknowledged is the plug being inserted all the way and then you've got the same type of deal here this actually um, completes the circuit because it's fully depressed uh, from the top side. So if the bolts are loose, you're not going to go anywhere. So safety, safety, safety is the name of the game. So you're going to have to wait five minutes before you pull this cover off. 
I didn't have to because I had that uh, plug out before I started the video simply so you didn't have to wait. Next, once again, we're going to turn it to DC volts and now we're going to do some tests. And this is all in the packet. Um, given that we've gone through this a couple of times, I'm not going to flip through the pages with you. Um, but trust me, it is in here and it will show you exactly where to test. So as you have your positive and negative leads coming directly out of your 300 volt battery, uh, we're going to start with that. Because if we have anything live there, uh, we're going to stop. There's no need to test any further. We've got to wait. If you get these leads backwards, it may show you a negative volts, which we're not worried about. And if you can see my meter right there, I've got zero volts. So that's a good thing, okay? Anything less than three volts is acceptable. So if you see a very small amount, that's okay. But we're not gonna call that good, okay? I'm gonna actually come down and you won't be able to see this too well from the camera angle. But I'm gonna go in right where we had that service disconnect plug and take another measurement. Again, we're getting near zero volts, okay? That's a good thing. But what we don't know is if we had something really weird going on, what if we had short to power somewhere between this connector? What if we had short to ground? What if you went to disconnect a ground cable in the car and it was wearing 300 volts? Well, we don't want to see that either. So to be safe, uh, we're going to take this a step further and do a number of different checks here. Again, this isn't a service procedure from General Motors. So we're going to come back over here and now I've already tested right here to the lead where it comes out the battery. I'm also going to check a ground. So this is going directly to um, the floor pan area. And then this is another ground for the hybrid module. We're going to test those grounds. We look good there. We don't have any kind of voltage. And then on this side of it too, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to check this lead here. I'm going to make sure I don't have anything up here. Over here back over here again i'm very conservative with these measurements but it doesn't take that much longer to just double check yourselves okay and again we have checked literally every possible thing we can find if we had a short to power if we had a short to ground um, if we had a capacitor that had not um, discharged the whole way we would see that okay so again we're just getting this vehicle ready where it's safe to be worked on, 